Hello everyone. Today I would like to go over Cisco Plus Secure Connect demo. But first of all, what is Cisco Plus Secure Connect? Cisco Plus Secure Connect is a turnkey SASE offer powered by the Cisco Security Cloud and the Meraki platform. It simplifies the way organization can securely access applications and resources hosted anywhere across multiple public and private clouds from any location at any time. Cisco Plus Secure Connect is a great solution because it has SD-WAN built-in already and termination points of VPN in the Umbrella Data Center. So it is a cloud native solution. We are not just spinning out firewall in the cloud to give you a termination point. SD-WAN is fundamentally embedded in the solution itself. And also there is a ZTNA piece for both managed and, and managed device while providing great visibility as well. With that being said, let's see what this looks like in general, in real life. All right, so the first thing that you do once you uh, go into the Cisco Plus Secure Connect dashboard is this overview page that you will see up front. And what I really like about this page is the visibility that you get up front as soon as you log in into this page, right? You can have information such as the total number of thread requests, how many were allowed, how many were blocked, and also how many were proxied. But you also have the umbrella tiles, which provide policies information, such as what type of DNS policies, web policies, as well as the data loss preventions. And also you have information about the users, like how many users are connected and also the location of those users. And we have information about the connectivity, like how many network tunnels are configured, as well as the number of sites with their respective location. And last but not least, we also have application information, right? So this is essentially, right, we are consolidating like different UI touch points to facilitate management, but also to provide great visibility. So once you receive your Secure Connect license, the first thing that you may want to do is to onboard you know, your site and we make it very easy for you to do so, right? So if I go here over sites, right, this gives me, right, the ability to actually onboard my, my site and to create cloud. So as you can see, we have like a couple of sites, branches that have already been created here, as well as the cloud app, right? The cloud hubs aggregate multiple Meraki network together and you can have up to 20 Meraki network in the same hub and you can you may also want to select you know want to have redundancy so the way you create that if I go here and I go over manage a uh, cloud hub this is where I'll be able to create a hub I can just add a new one here and here I will give the name of the app and uh, provide a specific location of this app and you may want to uh, create two apps just for redundancy but also for high availability pair and as soon as you add a app right you can now connect or attach it to a specific network or branch location and as you can see here and also so the way you can also do that so let's say if i finish creating on that and i cancel here i can also come here and then here that gives me the ability of creating a, a network as well. So as you can see, we've already had like uh, two network that I created and they are associated to the specific hub location that have already been created. All right, so this is it in terms of like just uh, onboarding your site as soon as you receive uh, the Secure Connect license. Now, the second thing that you may wanna do is to uh, to onboard, you know, the, first, the second thing you may want to do is to set up your remote access user, right? And in order to do so, you will go over Secure Connect and go to the remote access setup. So this is a place, you know, where you will start, you know, all your remote access configuration. So here, if I go over edit configuration, what you will notice that is that this will automatically cross launch to the umbrella dashboard without me having to enter my umbrella credential, right? This is pretty cool. And here we are in the umbrella dashboard where, you know, we will deploy our 
secure remote worker instances. And as you can see, we already have created some instances, one in North America and one in Europe. By the way you do that, you can just go and add new. And as of now, we have like two locations, North America and Europe as well. So now if you, so now in order to proceed to that setup, you will go over the settings and here you will go to, uh, you will go to a set of configuration to specify how you know you want your user to access the network so the first thing is the private network configuration where you will need to enter the dns server information you can have a second one and also you will need to enter as well the default gateway and uh, the dns name as well and here if we go on the traffic staring right you have the ability to enable split tunnel if you would like your if you would like to prioritize your user traffic right so let's say you only want critical traffic to go through the tunnel and basic internet traffic does not necessarily need to go through the tunnel right you have the ability to do so by providing those information and here you can add a specific uh, destination as well where you can either enter the ip address or you can enter the domain and once you click on save uh, and if you go to the drop down menu you can precise that hey i want this specific destination to go inside the tunnel and save it and the other piece is uh, the client uh, configuration right so which provides auto connect on start abilities so when users start their machine the any connect model module automatically start and prompt them to enter the username and password you also have the auto connect which allows you to reconnect uh, once a connection has been interrupted so and also you can allow a manual manual host input which enables users to use different vpn so for instance let's say right you have or some users that have their own uh, private vpn and they would like to use that we give them the ability to modify the setting within the any connects and you can also have a rdp session for both a uh, windows and linux machine as well and also right here you can also export the uh, XML file, which is the AnyConnect configuration file, and push it in your MDM or packet manager solution. Right. The next piece also is uh, assign users and group, right, where you can be very selective on who should access your VPN connection. Right. You may want you you may not want anyone in your organization within your organization to use the VPN connection. So you can do so via right. Let's say if you have individual users that you don't want them to have access to this application or you can do it via group whether it's like the hr group the engineering group or the financial group and last but not least we have what we call the endpoint posture right where you can push certificates to determine whether or not a device is managed unmanaged or if it it is a byud device right you can also do some minor posture checks uh, like what kind of OS your user are running and if you would like to allow that or not, right? So this is where you can also do that. And this is basically it as far as your remote uh, access configuration is concerned. And once you complete that, of course, you will click on save. And the other thing that, you know, you may want to do once you finish creating that is uh, to create, to configure private applications, right? And in order to do that, what I will, like, what I will do is I will simply return to the Secure Connects uh, dashboard by simply going to this, clicking on this. And then as you can see, I'm back to the uh, Secure Connect dashboard. And now if I go over private applications, that's where I will be able to configure, right, uh, my private application. So as you can see, we already have like a couple of private applications that have already been set up. In order for me to add additional one, I can click on new on add. And then here, 
I can enter her information about, you know, the private application specific name, as well as the descriptions of this specific application. Now, one thing that you will notice here is that there are two types of way that you can access that application, right? The network based access and the browser based access. So the network based access is for people, you know, that are connected via VPN, right? You will need to enter the uh, IP address and, you know, precise the protocol. That's more like for your VPN users. And the next one is the browser base, right? Uh, that's for like your users, for your non-VPN users. So the users that are not connected on the VPN. So it's more like the clientless access to this application. So that is exactly when our ZTNE piece come into play. So here you will enter those information as well. But in addition, you will have like an external URL. And this is the URL that your the user will be using, the one that are not connected on the VPN in order to have access to that specific applications. All right. And so once you have created the application, right, you may want to set up, especially like, let's say for your users that are connected on the VPN, you may want to set up like policies, firewall policies, and we give you the ability to do so here by going over firewall policies here, right? Uh, you can, you can configure your firewall policies. As you can see, we already have like several uh, policies that have been created here. And one thing that you may notice here is that there is a new default rule called the default private. And uh, back in the days when we only had the umbrella dashboard without uh, Cisco Plus Secure Connect, we only had the default internet rule. But now you see this rule, which is like the default private for your, for your private application network. So in order to create a new additional private rule, you will simply go to add. And then here you have the ability to either have like a, an internet traffic rule or a private applications rule. And there you will need to specify uh, the information about that specific rule, whether you want to allow or deny, deny, deny it, or you can also uh, enter the specific group that you want to have access to that, you know, specific application for this specific role or the user as well. And here, right, let's say, keep in mind that you have already created an application, a private application. So here you can go further and specify like, you know, the firewall rule for that specific application as well. So only for instance, like limited people can have access to the financial portal. All right. So once you've specified that, right. And then as I mentioned, this is more like for your VPN user, you can, you can save it. And then, you know, the firewall rule will be applied when your user are connected on the VPN. Now for your client list, right. For the one that are not connected on the VPN, you also have the ability to do so, but it will be called the browser access policies. And in order to do that, I'll go back to the dashboard. And here, if I go, if I toggle over the secure connect and I go to over the browser access policies, this is where I will set up those rules for my non VPN users. Right. And here, as you can see on the client list policies, right, we already have created some rules and especially there's one, which is like the patient portal, which I will use for a demo soon. So here it is an example of like, let's say if you add a rule, you just need to put the, the name of the rule, whether you want to allow or deny it and then specify, you know, the users that you want to have access to it. And keep in mind that, uh, those users are coming from the, uh, umbrella user list that you have integrated with your active directory or, you know, whatever solution that you may have as well. And then here, like assuming you have already created those applications, you can also attach the specific application that you would like uh, those users to have access to. And also you can even enhance security and put like an endpoint posture profile. And I will go over that in a second. So once you created those rules, you will click on save and that will automatically save the rule. Now let's take a look at the endpoint posture that I was telling about. 
So if I go here over the endpoint posture profile, let's take a look at, you know, what this entails. So the posture profile gives you the ability to define the posture whenever a user wants to have access to a private application. So here, like for instance, we have like this posture created that is called SE demo. But if I go on add, for instance, so this is how I can put the profile name. And those are the type of like posture that are looked into. First, you have the operating system, the browser, as well as the location. So in terms of like the operating system, you can be specific on which operating system that you like your user to have in order to have access to a specific application. Let's say in this case, I select Windows and Linux. And then if I go for the browser, I can be specific on which browser I want my user to use. In this case, I select Chrome and Firefox. And also I can be very specific about the location of where I would like the users to be to have access to this application. And for instance, let's say I select Europe, right? Immediately it will consider all the countries in Europe, but let's say, hey, I wanna exclude like a specific um, European country, like let's say I pick on France for instance, so I can remove that as well. So this will be the posture, right? That will be checked, right? Once your remote user try to have access to it. And once you complete that, you will save it. And what will happen is if you go back to your browser access policy, you can incorporate uh, the posture as well because it will be created here. So now what I would like to go over, it's a real life demo, right? So to just so that you can see from a user perspective what is really happening on the back end. And for that, I will use the example of like the patient portal for browser access that I've been used here. So let's say, right, you have a remote user that is sitting at Starbucks or is sitting at home, for instance, and is not connected on the VPN, right? And you would like to have access to that specific applications, right? And because the IT admin has already protected this application and created a URL for user to have access to this application on Secure Connect, so the user can directly go to this URL even though it's not connected on the VPN. Right. So let's say if I open a browser and, you know, this is the URL that the user will go to like patient portal. Right. So what you will notice is the user will be prompt to enter his credential in order to have access to this application. Right. So this is basically our ZTNA approach. So for instance, here, he will need to enter his email. And in this case, uh, let's say the email is bills at uh, tmedlabs.com and then you'll click on next and you will have to enter his password in this case all right and as you can see what is happening on the back end is that it will receive a push notification on a device that he owns and we do that using duo and once he has accepted that right he has validated his credential so we now sure that hey bill is who he say he is and as you can see he will have now access to this portal where where he can request appointment or have a billing or well, let's say if you want to pay a bill right so let's note that here we use duo to authenticate the proxy connection, but you can use any SAML IDP in order to do so. All right, this concludes my demo and thank you so much for listening.